what a night, what a performance, Dilly, and how pleased were you with what went on tonight? You know what, I'm a bit annoyed I didn't get it done in the first round, you know. I was trying to, but I just had to calm myself down and relax, you know. But also, I'm glad I was able to get it done for my team, man. The guys sacrificed so much. I've done it wrong, I sacrificed a lot. A lot of things I sacrificed, but the guys um, sacrificed a lot, man. I've been away from my family, they've been away from their family, but they've been true Spartan and work stay over Christmas. Christmas is a big thing in England, but the guys, you know, was on Christmas Day, they was on the phone to their family, a video call their family at Christmas Day, so I'm so proud that I was able to. This win is for them more than it is for me, you know. We have had the pleasure of being in camp with you this week. We've seen that relationship with the team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hugely important. How, speaking to your strength Steve, and Steve, conditioning Steve. coach there, he's telling me you can get 30% better. Is that how you feel? Yeah, yeah. You, listen, it's crazy because I'm here, but if you look at my training, the years I've been training, what I've been doing, I know far I am, it doesn't match up because athletically, even this athletic movement, I'm still improving on, you know. And getting better, moving better, training better, even even deadlift, I'm, you know, deadlifting. It's simple things, you know what I mean? Even running, simple things. So there's a lot more improvement, man, technically and, and, and physically as well. Mentally, I can't improve anymore mentally. Mentally, toughness and fortitude is, is, is top, you know, because that's, that's how I was brought up. Talk to me, Dillian, about the game plan tonight. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did that go and were you, did you manage to execute it as you hoped? My friend, thank you. Thank you so much. Listen, stay safe. Okay, God bless you. Thank you. My friend, stay safe. Thank you. God bless you. Then we just exchange cross. That's nice, that. That's really nice. What does that mean? Mine's a lot, though. What mine's, is mine's, <laughs> is mine's is about 1,500 quid to make. These doesn't strike me as there was that much to make. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's just... Are you telling me he's given you a duff belt and duff shorts? <laughs> no, these are the ones I was wearing, but, you know, it's just a souvenir. You know, it's, but yeah. Oh. What's the relationship like between you and Alexander Vivek? And he took some massive shots before you could finally put him away. He's just, listen, the guy, the guy, he's going to go down as, as a great fighter. I believe he's a great fighter. He won everything there is in the win. You know, from all the amateur titles, Olympic championship, European championship, world championship. You know, and um, he beat me uh, when I was number three in the world. So, you know, um, he deserves a lot of credit. He's a tough guy, very strong, very determined, and he's good technically. He, he, the only thing was today, because of the training we'd done, I was able to see the tail. Every time he was trying to do the same thing, he was trying to move to the right, move to the left, dip. But as soon as I was like, yo, mm -mm, not today. And then I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. You know what I mean? And tying him up and roughing him up and pushing him back and stuff. And that's what we worked on, you know? I'm just happy that I'm able to do what my, my coach wanted me to do and what we worked on, you know what I mean? When I spoke to Harold Knight yesterday, he <coughs> said to me, you're some man that listens to everything, but mm. you're your own man, and you'll often come back to him a bit later on and say, Harold, I see why, why you were saying that. Is that what happened? Were a few of those things something that just kind of ticked over in your mind? I've had to be independent my whole life because it's for, and so, unfortunate circumstances are put in as a, since I was a child to survive and to grow up and to live and to eat, you know what I mean? So I always listen to what people say, but then I put my own spin in it and thinking, okay, it's all good got there, double jab, double jab, but you have to make a decision when and how you set it up and stuff, but they're a very experienced guy and they give me the lead and I register it and I start adapting and start start working in it and then when I see it, I see it. All week you've been saying, I'm really relaxed, it's only boxing. We were telling you how important this fight was. Mm. You said it's the most important fight, but you were so relaxed. I mean, did you at any point in this camp feel the pressure? You know what? Even on my ring work, I was exceptionally relaxed. I, usually... I'm a bit psyched up on thing. I was just relaxed. I was chilled. I got psyched um, after the, the national anthem, and that was it. That was it. I wasn't like normally. I'm a bit more fired up. I'm howling a lot more. I'm a, I'm a bit more thing. But I was. I felt, felt good, man. I trained good, and I, I knew. I knew I could always knock Alexander Vekin out. A lot of people doubt me and talk rubbish. But I knew deep down I could knock him out. You know. You told us earlier that you can knock anyone on the planet out. Do you still feel that? Uh, uh, <laughs> you know. It, one, one thing I've been doing since a young age was knocking people out. Since, you know, I, I first person I knocked out, I was nine years old. It was that like by accident then, but a guy was bullying another guy at school and I closed my eye and threw a punch. And when I opened my eye, the guy was knocked out. And then I was like, okay, um, all right, cool. And then after that, I just believed it. You know, I mean, I just started, I grew up knocking people out, you know.
who next then? Is it going to be Deontay Wilder? You said earlier in the week again that if the call came, you'd take it. I don't know, man. Whatever, man. I just want to... I take so much risk in my career. So much risk. I've taken that, I've taken never. If I lose again tonight, you, this was a lot of pressure, but I'm good at dealing with pressure and being calm under pressure. It was a hell of a lot of pressure. If I lose again tonight, all the sacrifices, everything I made would have been for nothing. You understand? 15, um, 13 years of training, what for? Would have been for nothing, you understand? And it's not a good place to be in a position like that, you understand? You know, it's not, a, you know, if I had an Olympic gold medal or I was a former world champion, it would be easier for me to come back. But I'm in a position where if I lose, it's, every fight I have, if I lose, it's the end. Every fight I have, if I lose, it's the end. It's the end. So I just need to be trying to get in a better position where I don't have to think, oh my God. If I lose, if I lose, that's every single one of my fights. It's always been like that, you know? So what about the world title shot? I mean, how long are you prepared to wait for that opportunity? I'm not prepared to wait. I've waited long enough. I've waited long enough. But there's no reason why I should wait anymore, you know? Why should I wait anymore? You got, look at Eric Molina. He's had two world title shots. Damn it, Brazil, two, three. All of these guys, you know what I mean? Um, and they, they're nobody's compared to me. I can't the rank in the proper way, you know. I was number one challenger and mandatory, and they gave the, the world title fight to them at Brazil that was number three or number five. It's crazy. So is that AJ, is it Fury? How do you get that shot? I just break Joshua's leg, man, so he can't make the fight. Then after I just, <laughs> I just, I just turn up and fight um, Fury. Just finally then, what does this mean to your family? Again, this week has been a lot about your family, about your mum. What does this finally mean? You know what? I just want to spend some time, you know, my mum actually had COVID and didn't tell me. You know, she told me like yesterday and I was like, oh, thanks, mum. <laughs> you know, so, you know, because she's a nurse, you know, I mean, she's been helping people during this time and she had COVID and she was bad. She didn't tell me. So, I'll, you know, I just want to spend some time with her and see her and just hang out, man. You know, she, she's on the better end of it now. But, you know, I mean, sacrifice like that, you know, I mean, she was badly here when she didn't tell me to protect me from the fight, is what I'm saying. So, my family and my people is just amazing, man. Everybody's... Everybody around me is amazing. Everybody around me is amazing, you know. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks for your time this week. Really.